In this video, we will talk about FreeBSD and why you should use it. FreeBSD is an open source operating system. Usually when you think about open source, you think about Linux, but FreeBSD is not Linux, it is something different. Like Linux, it is a Unix operating system, but instead of using the Linux kernel, it uses a FreeBSD kernel. The kernel is not based on Linux, it's not even related to it, it's a completely different product. On the other hand, FreeBSD uses many open source applications that also Linux is using, like desktop environments, file browsers, web browsers, multimedia applications, development applications, you name it. Many Linux applications were already ported to FreeBSD, but for those that are not yet, FreeBSD offers a Linux compatibility layer which enables you to run Linux applications natively on FreeBSD. So on the surface level, you would not be even able to tell if you're running Linux or FreeBSD because they just look the same. So why would you then use FreeBSD if you can use Linux? There are a few benefits, but before we take a look into that, welcome to the channel. Here you can find topics about Linux, Docker, game dev or software development in general, or short agile dev art. If you like that kind of content, then give a like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos. All the links from this video are down in the description and also down there are the timestamps, so you can skip any part if you want. The first benefit of using FreeBSD that was apparent to me right away was the FreeBSD documentation. And by that I don't mean digging through hundreds of manual pages just to find this one line that you need to copy into your config file. No. After you install a package, you actually get a message from the package maintainer with the next steps that you need to do in order for this package to work. It often includes full commands that you just need to copy and paste into your console and execute. You don't get this on Linux, like it's obvious what you need to do, but you have no idea. FreeBSD also includes an excellent handbook, which is more like a summary, like a guide, with steps that you need to do in certain situations. Sometimes the documentation also includes debugging and troubleshooting steps, which is next level. For instance, if you have a problem on Linux, you would probably Google it and then find the answer on Stack Overflow or some other forum. If you have a problem on FreeBSD, chances are high that you are the first one having it, or at least no one has asked about it on the internet. So debugging and troubleshooting steps are very appreciated. Of course, there is also the FreeBSD community, which is also ready to help. The closest to this handbook on Linux is probably ArchWiki, although this usually works only for Arch and not for your distro. Which brings me to the second FreeBSD benefit. Applications on Linux are often developed with their favorite Linux distribution in mind. Once a new version of the application is released, it's up to the Linux distribution maintainers to package it and to make it work for their distro, which happens to not be the same distro that developers were targeting in the first place. In contrast, on FreeBSD, applications are developed for FreeBSD only and with FreeBSD as a whole in mind. Applications on BSD are called ports and they are basically all inside the same source. This is also the FreeBSD philosophy, you get all applications and source from one provider. This usually means that the system should be more stable, more robust, easier to maintain and easier to document, that I already mentioned. The third benefit of FreeBSD is the BSD license, which is not so restrictive as the GNU public license used by Linux. It actually claims that you are free to modify, distribute and even sell FreeBSD without being required to release your modifications as open source. On Linux you would need to make your code open source, on FreeBSD you don't need to. Potentially this could appeal to companies, especially if they are dealing with embedded devices, they could develop a driver for an embedded device and leave the code closed source. No closed source is always potentially a dead end, especially if the company runs out of money or if it just abandons the project. BSD had similar up and downs in the past, but thankfully we now have a fully open source operating system called FreeBSD. If you want to know more about the history of FreeBSD and how it came about, there is an excellent explanation page on the FreeBSD website. You can find very interesting details on this page. The FreeBSD website also mentions that FreeBSD could perform or performs better than Linux and that it is more stable than Linux. But there are definitely things where Linux is better than FreeBSD, the first two being popularity and adoption and the third one being hardware compatibility. 
General purpose devices like webcams or Wi-Fi adapters or dongles usually work out of the box on Linux, it's just plug and play. On FreeBSD it can happen that the device is not supported. I also had to learn the hard way that there is no support for my Wi-Fi adapter on FreeBSD. This actually reminds me what Linux was 10 years ago, and for many people hardware support is a must, especially if you use those devices on a daily basis. In addition, certain GPUs are also not supported or they just don't work well. Now, although Linux wins the compatibility battle in my book, it's fair to say that on most modern devices where Linux can run, FreeBSD can probably run as good as well without any issues. In my opinion, it is a good Linux alternative, especially if you're used to Linux, then you will definitely feel at home using FreeBSD. If you like my videos and also want to support me, I also have a Patreon page. I really appreciate all the support I get and it's because of your support that I can make videos like this one. So thank you very much and the link to Patreon is up there or down in the description. Those were my reasons why you should use FreeBSD and in the next video we will actually install it and try it out. If you are interested, the link to the next video is up there or down in the description. And that's all for this video, thank you very much for watching. If you like this video then like and subscribe. And if you really like the video you also have a super thanks down there where you can buy me a coffee for instance so I can make more of those awesome videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.